Scientists have estimated that this population will be functionally extinct, which means it's not going to be a viable population within 20 to 25 years. 20 to 25 years doesn't give us a big window of time. For millennia, these animals grew up in oceans that were boundless. Now there are boundaries, boundaries of nets and fishing gear. When whales hit ropes, they freak out. And as they swim, the ropes saw into their flesh. In the end, an unfortunate percentage end up dying, usually of starvation or being overwhelmed by infection. I believe that photography is one of the most important tools that we have to motivate people to care. We can fall in love through photos and we can be moved to action by photos. To be present at an, a, a right whale necropsy is sort of an overload of emotions. You know, you can't help but think about moms and calves and grandmothers and, you know, these family units. There's one less member of that family out there. You're trying to think about what they're saying to each other. What do they know? What ancient wisdom might they possess if we could only tap into that? Probably the best thing for a whale is to get rid of ropes altogether. Ropeless gear for right whales means no rope in the water, means no entanglement risk, means we don't have to worry anymore about whales becoming entangled in fishing gear. This species, you know, not only is it huge and iconic and part of our New England culture, this idea that they could go extinct in our lifetime has really added a lot of urgency. And biodiversity is important to us. Extinction and having it not happen in our lifetime is important to us. Every day counts and every right whale counts at this point in time. As long as there's some right whales left swimming in our ocean, it's not too late. Do we want to just bear witness to the extinction of a species that is within our power to save, or are we going to do something um, to save them? You can give up or you can fight. We choose to fight. <laughs>